what God is to me is not the conventional way what people think it is as this human form um, similar to us how we are built and structured um, this all-knowing all-powerful being God to me is the supreme ball of energy that's connected to everyone everything every um, living creature and it has positive qualities and negative qualities um, or good or evil qualities a lot of people think God is 100% good and then there's a separate entity which is 100% bad which they call quote unquote the devil I believe that these both energies are together and it balances itself out this is, and I believe that humans are like that. I believe we have good and bad qualities inside and it's up to us to balance it out and nurture which side that we really want to, which side that we want. You know, if we want to be bad, if we want to be good. That's a choice that we have to make. Not all the other external factors uh, that plays into, okay, I'm going to be bad because I didn't have a father or a mother or I grew up poor. Those just excuses. You get to nurture the side that you want to nurture and be, and choose to be the person that you would like to be. Um, so God to me is a supreme ball of energy that um, has both good and bad properties, and is non-judgmental, and um, do love us unconditionally. But we have a role in that. We have a choice in that. It's not an all-knowing force like most people believe. It is, but it, or there's rules and laws to that energy where we could use that power to bring forth um, our dreams, our goals, to bring forth what we really desire. To me, religion is. Um, the questions. Spirituality is the answer. Um, religion is humans trying to understand spirituality and they trying to put it in an orthodox way to understand it. And they have um, all these do's, thou shalt not do this, you shouldn't do that, you know. And these are good guides to live by. Um, that's why the Bible stands for basic instruction for full leaving earth. Um, people might get mad what I'm about to say. I do think um, Holy Bibles or the Quran or um, the Book of Mormons, I think these are great books and I think you sh they give you great guidance, but they're not in all to be all. There's a big world out there and um, and sin to me is not really those sins they have in the Bible, you know. I think sin to me is when you deny your natural self. That's only one sin to me is when you deny you being your authentic self. Um, that's the only sin to me. One of the major life experiences I had where I realized God was, I use the word God because I know everybody else used the word God, but usually I try to say it because I don't see it as a, any humanness to it. Um, is when we was little, me and my sisters, my dad had to work at night and he had to leave three underage kids at home. And it was scary because, you know, anything could happen when, uh, you leave kids at home, it could be a burglar, it could be a rapist or whatever that came in. But my mom at the time called the police um, to get us, saying there are three underage kids at home and they should be taken out there. And if the cops came and took us out there, we would have been separated in foster homes. So that was always been my biggest nightmare. And that when that happened, when the cops came to the department that night, I got on my knees and cried for my father. And this was a time where there was no cell phones. I was only pay phones. And he had was going to work by train, so there was nobody we could call him at work. He was on his way to work. And I cried and just prayed, like, please bring my dad home, please bring my dad home. And he actually did came home. He caught the last bus coming back and came home and said, 
God just told him to come home. And right there I knew that there was a God and there was something higher. There was some type of energy, some type of connection where you didn't need a cell phone, you didn't need video, you didn't need that. Just that energy enough is enough to attract what you need at that moment. My favorite sound in the whole world is church bells. I love church bells. My first memory, I don't know what you call the first memory when you first awake, and my first memory is of church bells. When I lived in D.C. with my grandmother on 7th Street, there was a church out there, and I remember waking up and hearing the church bells. Um, while waking up, and it was sunny outside, and my grandmother had these clear, kind of whitish, clear, thin curtains, and the wind was blowing and it was springtime. And I felt like, for me, those bells were just for me waking me up. I felt like that was God waking me up. Like, okay, you're, you're ready now to start your journey. And every, no matter what I'm going through in life, if I'm sad or depressed or I'm always in my mind, I am because my mind just keeps going. When I hear the church bells, I know everything's gonna be okay. I feel like, first of all, ask God to give you signs that in, that you are on the right path. I believe that you ask God for a sign, He will give you your sign. You just have to be in tune with it and pick it up. I can't tell you if you're on the right path or not. It's a feeling. God will give you your sign. And I feel like you will be rewarded. A lot of people think that you shouldn't be rewarded for doing good things or doing well, like, oh, I'm going to do it. I don't want to be recognized. I don't want to be awarded, rewarded for anything, you know, especially when, you know, you're a good Christian. But one thing I do believe in, and it might sound trite to say, is that God made us a promise. He promised us, or it or she, whatever you want to call it, promised us that if you do my will, you won't want for anything. And if I'm going to do God's will, I'm keeping that promise to him or it or she. I expect it to keep its promise to me. I don't want to do well and not get rewarded for it. You know, I want to get rewarded for doing well, you know, to keep me going. You know, if I make a sacrifice, I'm making all these sacrifices to make the right decision when the bad decision could be so much more, could be funner. I have a lot of fun with the bad decisions and I do the good decisions for a long period of my time and not get rewarded for it. Eventually somebody gonna say, to hell with it. I'm gonna go make a bad decision because at least I get some type of reward there. You know, so I feel like if you um, are doing good or doing well or doing what you think your purpose is, there should be rewards along the way for, okay, now, I'm, now I'm on the right path. You ever seen like Super Mario when he's in different worlds and he collecting the coins every so often? And, you know, keeps him going until he goes saves the princess. Hello, that's what on the right path is. You don't want to be on the right path and you get your dead deathbed and didn't get your reward. Like, okay, you did good all these years. No, you need something in between those stages. But okay, you're on the right path. You know, so you're on the right path and you're getting rewarded for it. I expect to get rewarded for it. Demand that you get awarded for it when you do well. Know this one, you don't. And my family, friends, everybody know my obsession with Wizard of Oz. I like I'm in love with Wizard of Oz because to me it describes life. And it sounds funny, people look at it and think it's a kitty movie and it's for entertainment. Hear me out, please. <laughs> you know, you have this young girl who's discovering life, she gets lost in this different world, 
she meets friend uh, when she gets there to all she meets friends she meets um, a good witch that protects her and then you know then this is bad witch that comes to threaten her so you have both good and bad energy you know and all she's doing is trying to get back home you know even though she just left home and didn't want to be home once you get out into the world and you realize how good and bad it could be everybody wants to get back home and along the way uh, on the yellow brick road that she's following she meets people she meets different types of people she meets people with no brain no heart no carriage people that are just as insecure as her they all lack something but they come together for a greater good you know, they become friends and you run into fork in the road, which direction do you take? You run into your enemy on the road and you have friends there to protect you and help you and overcome it. Um, and eventually they make it to Oz, to the promised land. And then he says, well, if you want me to help you, you need to do, go get the witch's broom, an impossible task. And when they come and they accomplish that and they come back, He's like, well, come back in 30 days after they did what they supposed to do. And it's like authority, you know. It's like, hey, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. You're supposed to give me what I want. And they're disappointed again and come to realize that authority figure is just a little man behind the curtain. And he's exposed. Everybody was exposed in that movie. And, and everybody got what they wanted at the end. But the thing about it is that they already had it. They already had the courage, they already had the brain, they already had the heart, they already had a home because you have friends there, people that love you. They already had everything. And you said they had to go through trials and tribulation to reveal it to them. We love to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Positive thinking does not work. What to me positive thinking do is just mask how you really feel. If you feel in a certain way, I believe you should just feel it. I don't think you should cover up with, let me just think positive and turn off that what I'm feeling. It doesn't work. Because if you're trying to achieve something and you're trying to get something, you get what you believe in at the core of your heart. So I have a friend. She believes all men are not good. But she put on the positive front, like, okay, you know, I gotta think positive. I'm gonna do affirmations. I'm gonna um, give men the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna do this and that. Even though at her deep core level, she believes that all men are not good. She keeps attracting all men are not good. So positive thinking doesn't work. If you wanna change something and get the results you want, you're gonna have to change your belief system. That's the only way. There's a lot of people out here that think positive and bad things happen to them. It doesn't get the results that you want. It's just a temporary mask. So you can disconnect yourself from the pain that you're feeling at the time to just think positive. So, not that I want the people in the world to be depressed and go around mopey, but if you're depressed or sad, happy, excited, feel it. Don't deny what you feel. No, don't feel it for a whole year, <laughs> you know, where it affects your life and you can't function. But if you feel in a certain way, feel it, don't mask it. Just feel it, admit it, accept it, and move on. Don't mask it with positive thoughts. Because if you want to achieve something, you have to believe it. That's the only way. You attract what you believe. For example, I always wanted a clock turner home. That was like my number one goal or number two goal in life. Write a book was number one and getting a clock turn home was number two. And I had somebody at work who was a real estate agent told me I should get a home in Baltimore that was $80,000 and stuff like that. Your mortgage would be low. And I was like, at one time I was like, oh yeah, she's right. You know, my mortgage would be cheap. I'll make good money and cheap mortgage. But I didn't like those homes. It wasn't what I genuinely wanted in my heart. My heart didn't light up when I looked at those type of homes. And one day I was driving in the car and I actually started trembling. And I scared my sister Sonia that was with me at the time and I just blurted out. I said, I'm going to get me a clock turner home. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. 
I'm gonna get me a clock turn home. And I believe that with all my mind. There was no doubt. I declared it, I believed it. And I got my clock turn home built in 2013 with no money down. So, you get what you believe in, not what you think.